Welcome to all of you uh, in this uh, lecture series on corrosion in refinery. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about corrosion in the overhead section of uh, column, and which is also called overhead corrosion. Now, overhead section of column consists of the column top part where the gases exit from the column to uh, it goes to condenser and air fin coolers and ultimately in reflux drum. Then this whole section is called overhead section and the corrosion in that section is called overhead corrosion. Now this overhead corrosion can occur in primary units like crude distillation unit and vacuum distillation unit. And it can also occur in secondary unit like uh, FCC main fractionator overhead section or sour water stripper unit overhead section. So we will discuss about both these uh, units, primary units as well as secondary units. We will first discuss about overhead corrosion in primary units. So before I start, uh, since we discussed in our earlier lecture that uh, corrosive substances in crude oil are sulfur, naphthenic acid and salts. We have already discussed about the sulfur and naphthenic acid in our earlier lectures. So we need to discuss about the salt content in crude oil. Now in crude oil the salts usually found in form of chlorides like uh, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride and calcium chloride. And what, what happened? Uh, these salts uh, mostly magnesium chloride and calcium chloride uh, in the crude, crude oil when crude oil uh, goes for preheat or uh, exchanger goes into preheat exchanger or in furnace uh, in crude uh, distillation unit then when temperature increases around 120 to 150 degrees Celsius then what happened this magnesium chloride and calcium chloride hydrolyze and it produce hydrogen chloride so what we found that uh, magnesium chloride is usually least stable and it hydrolyzes at lower temperature. Calcium chloride is slightly more stable to magnesium chloride, so it hydrolyzes at higher temperature. But sodium chloride is the most stable and it is stable up to 760 degrees Celsius. So it do not, uh, sorry, it does not hydrolyze up to 760 degrees Celsius. So, so the only uh, salt content which is in form of magnesium chloride and calcium chloride it hydrolyzes and HCl produce. Now what happened this HCl enter into distillation column and it goes up with lighter hydrocarbons and water vapors and it exit from the top of the column and enter into the overhead section of the of the column. Now what happened this dry HCl gas along with water vapor and light hydrocarbon is not corrosive at all no problem I'll, no problem but what happened when the temperature goes down and when temperature goes below dew point of water vapor then water condense out and when water condense it what it does it dissolve all the HCl which is in contact of the water so a aqueous phase form which is highly acidic in nature and pH goes as low as 1 to 4 and we know that in aqueous phase when pH is very low then acidic corrosion can occur which is also called uh, this is corrosion below 200 temperature that is low temperature corrosion can occur uh, when uh, temperature uh, when pH goes uh, below 4 so because of this reason when temperature goes below 100 degrees Celsius or whatever the dew point may be uh, then water condense uh, water vapor condense out and it dissolves HCl uh, system goes and become acidic and corrosion will occur so what is the mechanism of that corrosion we have already uh, seen in our early lecture that what will happen iron will oxidize and it will form an ode uh, it will be behave like an ode and it will corrode H plus ion will accept that electron it will ox uh, reduce and it will behave like cathode so overall reaction will be this iron sulfide uh, iron uh, of the metal will react with hydrogen chloride and ultimately iron chloride will form now this iron chloride does not precipitate out on the metal surface so it does not form any passive layer and so corrosion rate does not reduce now suppose crude oil is 
high sulfur is uh, crude oil was high sulfur in nature so there will be sulfur also and that sulfur will uh, turn out to be h2s and that h2s will also go into the overhead section of column and that h2s generally what it does it react with iron chloride and it and uh, it produces iron sulfide and hcl so hcl again regenerated and this cycle will continue now we we could think of that this iron sulfide will precipitate out and it will form a passive layer so this uh, reaction rate will go down but the problem is that we have already discussed when we were discussing about hydrogen damages this iron sulfide form a passive layer only when the ph is above 7 or 8 and because what happens when this acidic hcl dissolve in water ph usually remain below 4 or 5 so this as iron sulfide solubility at this ph will be very low uh, sorry, uh, uh, iron sulfide concentration at this pH will be very low and it won't precipitate out. And we have discussed how at higher pH iron sulfide concentration goes high and it will precipitate out and it will form a protective film. But uh, in this case when pH is below 5, so this, uh, this formation will not take place. So th there won't be any protection. Now, this iron sulfide will further react with hydrogen chloride and further produce H2S. So, this cycle continue and corrosion will uh, continue and ultimately there will be problems. So, we need to control it. So, how will we can control it? There are several methods. The one method is to reduce, to cut down the source of HCl at all. And we do it by what we do, we do it by uh, reducing the salt content of crude oil, uh, crude oil and the process is called desalting. So what we do is we reduce the salt content of crude oil below 1 ptb, ptb is pounds per thousand barrel, it usually comes uh, roughly around 4 ppm. So by desalting we have done a lot of the job by reducing the salt content so SCL concentration in the overhead section will be very low. Now another method is caustic injection and this is done after desalting so uh, after, uh, in desalting we have reduced salt content at much lower level but still there will be salt and that salt what we tr we want to try to uh, convert the magnesium chloride and calcium chloride into sodium chloride because we know that sodium chloride is stable at higher temperatures so it won't go into this uh, hydrolyze so HCl will not form and there won't be any HCl in the overhead section so if anyhow we could convert magnesium chloride and calcium chloride into sodium chloride then that will be beneficial and with this logic we inject caustic that is NaOH NaOH react with magnesium chloride and calcium chloride and it forms sodium chloride and sodium chloride is stable so there won't be SCL in the overage section of column but there is some problem with uh, NaOH dosing uh, that we need to keep in mind so that we should not inject caustic at very high amount uh, because when we inject caustic at very high amount then it will create uh, stress corrosion cr cracking uh, we have already uh, gone through that a stress corrosion cracking can occur in caustic environment in CS steel and in some cases in even in austenitic stainless steel. So if uh, caustic injection at very high amount then this problem will be there, uh, stress corrosion cracking will be there. So we inject caustic such that pH remains roughly around neutral, pH should not go above se 7. There are other problems also with caustic injection because this NaCl forms, okay, no problem, HCl will not produce, but this NaCl, uh, what it does, it, it fouls the preheat exchanger strains and it also, it may deactivate in the secondary units, catalyst deactivation can occur because of this uh, NaCl. So these two methods is done in crude distillation unit only and rest other 
corrosion control method of the overhead in primary units rest other method which I am going to discuss is done in crude distillation unit as well as vacuum distillation unit so what are the th other methods the other method is called neutralization what it does is see corrosion is occurring in the overhead section why because pH goes below 4 when HCl uh, HCl dissolve in the initial water dew point it dissolve in the water so if anyhow we could increase the pH I mean the we could make the solution neutral then that corrosion will not take place uh, severe corrosion will not take place and uh, based on this uh, concept what we do is we inject base in the overhead section so that it will react with the acid and uh, solution become neutral so what type of bases we generally uh, dose is one is ammonia and another is amine so we dose ammonia and amine in the overhead section to neutralize the acid and suppose if I am uh, injecting ammonia so what will happen uh, it reduces it increases the pH of the condensed water up to around neutral solution 5.5 to 6.5 and hence corrosion rate reduces but here is another problem uh, the first question uh, here is another problem we should not dose ammonia at very high amount and we should not increase our pH above 7 why why we should not do, do this because at higher pH ammonia react with hydrogen chloride and form ammonium chloride and which sublime out at higher temperature sublime out means uh, it turns out from gas phase to the solid phase and when in sublime out so what will happen there will solid be there in the over section and it will foul the line or the exchanger tubes and also if some electrolyte is under the deposit then it will cause under deposit corrosion this is crevice corrosion we have already discussed when we discuss about crevice corrosion and we know that when crevice corrosion occurs pitting corrosion can take place so this is one problem now let us try to figure out why this ammonium chloride precipitation can take place when pH goes high okay so suppose in the overhead section ammonia was there and HCl was there and ammonium gas react with HCl gas and it will pro produce ammonium chloride in the gas space suppose now we know the overhead uh, section the pressure we, of the overhead section we know we can calculate the amount of ammonia which we have dosed in the column <coughs> in the top part we can also calculate HCl amount of HCl which is going into the overhead based on the salt content of crude oil or uh, feed of vacuum distillation unit okay so we can calculate partial pressure of ammonia and partial pressure of HCl and based on that we can calculate Kp of this reaction that is equilibrium constant ideally the reaction should be written like uh, ammonium ammonia gas plus HCl is in equilibrium with ammonium chloride solid but I have just reversed it for making the thing simple otherwise KP will be won by this uh, some partial pressure and so, so that will be difficult to analyze so better uh, I have written in uh, reverse direction so this is this reaction is endothermic in nature so once we know this KP uh, that is equilibrium constant we can calculate the temperature at which this equilibrium constant can be achieved by using Wandhoff equation and that temperature will be the minimum top temperature required to avoid salt deposition what does it mean is if my temperature is above that temperature then this ammonium chloride sublimation will not sublimation out will not take place rather ammonia and HCl will remain in gas space but if that temperature the temperature will be below this uh, this calculated temperature then ammonium chloride salt precipitation will take place ok now we know that this since this is endothermic in nature and for endothermic reaction equilibrium constant increases with increase in temperature so what happen if 
kp is high then the temperature required for equilibrium to achieve will also be high okay and since kp is equal to partial pressure of ammonia and to partial pressure of hcl and if ammonia dosing is high i mean ph is high then in that case kp will be high so at higher temperature this equilibrium will achieve so it means at higher temperature this sublimation out will take place so because of that reason when ph goes high ammonium chloride will precipitate will sublime out even at higher temperature which is exist in over its section and if uh, partial pressure of ammonia is low so in that case uh, this sublimation uh, the ammonia and hcl will remain in gaseous space uh, at the existing temperature of the over its section now we we can uh, if it is not clear with this discussion we can take a, a numerical example for example suppose uh, uh, suppose that uh, just a rough example we can take the suppose uh, kp at uh, 100 degrees celsius is 10 to power 10 to the power minus 10 okay and kp at the 150 degrees celsius is 10 to the power minus 6 and suppose we have calculated kp based on the our partial pressure of ammonia and hcl and we found that it turns out to be 10 to the power minus 10 and our temperature in the over section is 150 suppose so in that case since at 150 kp should be 10 to the power minus 6 and since we are, we are reaction uh, this partial pressure of ammonia into partial pressure of hcl is 10 to the power minus 10 only that will be reaction quotient so reaction quotient is much lesser than equilibrium constant so the reaction will move into the forward direction it means this reaction will remain in this direction so ammonia gases and hcl gases will remain up to 150 degrees celsius but what but once it reaches to 100 degrees celsius so it that reaction quotient will become equilibrium constant kp and this equilibrium will achieve and this solu, uh, sublimation out will take place so because of this reason we should not dose ammonia very high high amount uh, we should dose ammonia such that the ph of condensed water remain around 5.5 to 6.5 so this this was the one problem another problem is that uh, we also dose in the overhead section of column a corrosion inhibitor and corrosion in inhibitor uh, does not function well at higher ph what it does it break out breaks at higher ph why we will discuss in, uh, in subsequent uh, in in this lecture only after some time and also there will be problem this ammonia ammonia we have Uh, learned that when we were discussing about a stress corrosion cracking that ammonia can cause uh, a stress corrosion cracking in brass uh, so when we dose over uh, over amount of ammonia then a stress corrosion cracking can occur in the admiralty in the brass uh, and we use brass in the crude distillation in it over its system of uh, in the cooler or condenser so because of these problems we should not uh, dose ammonia at very high amount and we should maintain ph around 5.5 to 6.5 so, so this and uh, this is the example see this is an example of stress corrosion cracking in brass to because of high amount of ammonia dosing so suppose suppose i have dosed uh, ammonia uh, and uh, uh, um, the temperature required for sublimation out uh, uh, suppose is 120 and our overhead temperature goes below 120 then what will happen it will sublime out and it will create fouling problems as well as under deposit corrosion problem but as uh, as far as this salts is in dry condition ammonia color it is not corrosive it creates only fouling pro problem and under deposit corrosion if some uh, electrolyte is uh, remain under the deposits but what happen this ammonium chloride is hygroscopic in nature and because of this reason it it absorbs water so if ammonium chloride chloride was uh, remain under dry condition it is not corrosive but problem is this ammonium chloride is hygroscopic in nature and it absorbs water from the steam at temperature above the dew point of temp uh, dew point of water and so 
it will now it will now become wet a uh, wet ammonium chloride salt is very corrosive because it is a stick why it is a stick because it is salt of a strong acid and weak base so we know that strong acid and weak base salt uh, create acidic solution so <coughs> because of these reason one reason was that uh, ammonium chloride deposition can take place at uh, higher temperature above dew point temperature uh, if uh, if ammonia dosing is higher if ammonia dosing is higher then it will uh, precipitate out at much higher temperature if ammonia dosing is low also then also in most cases we found that it uh, uh, sublime out at uh, much higher temperature and another reason is because of this it can absorb uh, water from a steam at above dew point of water because of these reason what we need to maintain the temperature in the overhead section above 20 to 30 degrees celsius above dew point which we have calculated there is another reason the one reason uh, there is uh, another reason is that the temperature of the wall usually remain lower compared to the temperature of the bulk so if my bulk temperature is higher then also wall temperature may goes down and because of that reason uh, this uh, condensation may take place so because of these reason uh, we need to maintain our temperature 20 to 30 degrees celsius above the dew point which we have calculated <clears throat> okay so uh, so now suppose what will happen why it is corrosive when it is uh, in uh, when ammonium chloride is wet uh, the reason is uh, what happens that ammonia solubility in water at higher temperature is very low so what happen when ammonium chloride uh, become wet at higher temperature i mean at initial water dew point so in that case chloride ion usually remain stable in water and ammonium plus uh, ion uh, is not remain stable what happen ammonia will escape out of the solution because its solubility at higher temperature in water is low so what happen ultimately the uh, because of this escape of, of ammonia the solution will remain uh, will contain HCl only and it will be a concentrated solution of HCl so ammonia will not provide a protection of uh, uh, at initial water dew point uh, because of this uh, low solubility of ammonia and so this will solution will become acidic in nature and corrosion will take place the one reason is this now so because of this reason we need to maintain our temperature above the salt deposition temperature one thing and in some cases to uh, reduce the concentration of uh, HCl we can also do water washing generally we do not do water washing in main uh, in primary units but if our HCl concentration is high I mean our uh, crude oil contains high amount of salt then we need we may need uh, water washing and since we have discussed about the uh, ammonia escaping escaping from water at high temperature and so it uh, when first water condenses it does not provide any protection where uh, at initial water dew point uh, so in when we compare ammonia and ammo amine in terms of neutralizer what we found that ammonia is not a better solution compared to amine one reason we have already discussed and other reasons are that Ammonia may also react with HTS and form bisulfide. Uh, ammonium bisulfide also is corrosive. We will discuss about ammonium bisulfide corrosion uh, when we discuss about overhead corrosion in secondary unit. Also, uh, ammonia is uh, considered a hazardous compound. Uh, so, because of these reasons, uh, amine is a better neutralizer. Amine, amine what, it, uh, what it does is, amine is easier to uh, uh, I mean are easier and safer to see, a store and hand handle and the most important point is uh, at initial water dew point I mean at hot water uh, amine solubility is much higher compared to ammonia so it provides much improved pH control in this initial water dew point and also uh, 
Ammonia creates stress uh, um, causes stress corrosion cracking in uh, brass, but amine is usually uh, less aggressive toward cop copper alloys. So, based on these uh, observation, amine is considered as better neutralizer compared to ammonia. So, this is about uh, all about neutralization. Uh, neut uh, we have discussed about this, and let us. Th let us uh, try to figure out uh, where this corrosion take place for example this is a crude distillation unit but we find this uh, this uh, this is overhead section and here SCL corrosion may take place if it is uh, a water vapor condense out I mean uh, dew point temperature goes below dew point here ammonium chloride so corrosion may take place and this uh, so to avoid this we can dodge ammonia there is another dosing that is called ZI it is also called corrosion inhibitor dosing so we'll discuss about corrosion inhibitor so so we have discussed about three control methods one is uh, desalting another is uh, caustic injection which is done in crude distillation one uh, unit only third one was neutralizer dosing which is ammonia or amine uh, that can be done uh, those in crude distillation unit overhead as well as vacuum distillation unit overhead and fourth is corrosion inhibitor and this dosing is also done in uh, crude distillation unit as well as vacuum distillation unit so before we jump over directly the type of corrosion inhibitor which we do uh, which we dose in the uh, primary units let us try to just discuss about little bit about corro corrosion inhibitor what it is Corrosion inhibitors are basically organic or in inorganic chemicals which we when we dose in a small concentration in overhead or any corrosive environment then it reduces corrosion rate and how it does it does by either forming a film on metal surface by it just adsorb on the metal surface and form a films or it forms a passive film or it uh, it uh, increases the strength of passive film of um, it may be metal oxide or metal hydroxide whatever may be so based on this uh, mechanism there co there are different types of corrosion inhibitor so corrosion inhibitor generally divided into two types one is which uses inorganic chemicals that could be anodic or cathodic corrosion inhibitor and th second is organic inhibitor is basically adsorb on the metal surface and form a film okay so talking about in inorganic inhibitor inorganic inhibitors are basically anodic inhibitors or cathodic inhibitors anodic inhibitor what it does it forms a passive film on the surface of uh, 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 metal where anodic reaction take place how it forms a film uh, what happens due to anodic reaction metal ion produce and in anodic inhibitor there usually it contains hydroxide ion or oxygen ion and that react with metal ion and produce metal hydroxide or metal oxide and which deposit on the metal surface and form an insoluble film which is impermeable to metal metallic ion and because of in that way they reduce the uh, further anodic reaction and because of that reason they are also called passivative uh, inhibitors there is another type of inhibitor that is called cathodic inhibitor how it reduces corrosion rate uh, it reduces corrosion rate by either by slowing the cathodic reaction uh, that is also called cathodic poison or selectively precipitating or forming a passive layer on cathodic areas like it does in anodic inhibitors so based on this different reaction uh, different mechanism ox uh, uh, there are different types of cathodic inhibitor one could be oxygen x k avenger which reduces corrosion rate in uh, a neutral medium or where oxygen is there what it does it it react with oxygen and reduces the dissolve oxygen of uh, uh, in the water and so corrosion rate reduces other is called cathodic poisons uh, it what it does it it reduce reduces the cathodic uh, reaction how it does uh, generally it is used in acidic medium in acidic medium we know that H plus ion goes to H atom which is adsorbed on the metal and there is another H atom adsorbed in the metal and those two H atom adsorbed 
react and produces hydrogen gas okay so what it uh, these cathodic poison what it does it inhibit this uh, uh, um, hydrogen gas formation so uh, h plus ion was reacting with uh, electron and producing h atom but this h atom cannot combine and form hydrogen gas when this cathodic poison will be there such type of uh, cathodic poisons are antimony arsenic sulfur or sulfides which hinders the hydrogen atom from forming hydrogen gas so once this reaction will hinder this reaction will also reduce and so uh, the cathodic reaction will reduce and because of this cathodic reaction anodic reaction will also reduce and corrosion rate will reduce so how it does actually what happens sulfides and selenides adsorb on the metal surface and because of this re region two hydrogen adsorbed uh, metal uh, hydrogen adsorbed atom will not ca or cannot combine so this rate of reaction goes down uh, and there is a problem with this uh, cathodic poison is this because of this uh, reduction of hydrogen atom hydrogen gas formation this hydrogen atom may go into the metal and it creates hydrogen blistering and hydrogen embrittlement which we have already discussed and because of this reason environment controlling uh, containing hydrogen sulfide uh, which act as cathodic poison also is a very detrimental uh, uh, for alloys and metals and another type of cathodic uh, inhibitor is cathodic precipitator uh, which what it does it uh, it contains metal ions so based on this uh, uh, cathodic reaction suppose oh minus is producing so that oh minus will react with method metal ion and it will pro produce metal hydroxide so again passive film forms so this is the one possible way for example uh, if it is uh, cathodic inhibitors so because of this passive film H plus ion cannot go to the metal surface and so reaction will not take place so corrosion won't take place similarly if it is anodic so it will form anodic passive film so iron 2 plus ion will not go inside the solution so this reaction corrosion rate will reduce dramatically third type is called uh, uh, organic corrosion inhibitor and they are usually long chain amines and or polyamines like C12 to C24 and they are usually solid at ambient temperature but dissolve in hydrocarbons basically in naphtha kerosene uh, or uh, and they uh, and what it does it uh, since it contains a polar group uh, amine group and uh, may it also may contains some sulfur comp compounds so these night uh, these polar groups what it does it attach to the carbon steel surface by chemical adsorption and this hydrocarbon tail remain inside the flow and does, uh, it does not allow water and other corrosive molecules to reach the metal surface now these ad adsorb inhibitor molecules may undergo surface reaction and it produce polymeric film because of this reason this is also called filming amines or filmers and once a film forms uh, a corrosive substance cannot go into direct contact with metal surface and corrosion rate reduces so such type of filming amines could be these we usually use aherlan uh, in our uh, crude distillation unit or vacuum distillation unit now the, the some important uh, uh, important uh, uh, parameters or characteristic which is required for a corrosion inhibitor to be form an effective film the one is it must adhere to metal surface uh, it must be non porous in nature and it must be self repairing what it happens is that due to fluid flow variation it is or transient flow uh, this co film usually breaks they may also break at high, higher pH which we have already discussed so because of these reasons continuous injection is required okay and suppose if pH is increased so in that case what we need to do is we need to reduce ammonia dosing because at higher pH there will be several problem and also we need to increase caustic uh, corrosion inhibitor dosing because at higher pH this corrosion inhibitor damage will be much higher okay so these 
were all about the operational things to reduce the corrosion in the overhead section. Uh, we can also select materials to avoid this corrosion. Uh, the material selection is generally monels. We uh, do linings of monel in the overhead uh, section or the top section of crude towers, condenser or distillation drum liners, because monel is generally resistant to uh, weak SCL or or also in overhead condenser we use admirably brass we have discussed about what it is in our earliest lectures and for most of the piping we usually use CS so astringent monitoring is required about ammonia dosing and uh, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, corrosion inhibitor dosing so uh, we will stop uh, we will stop here in this uh, for this today's lecture uh, the next lecture we will discuss about overhead corrosion in secondary unit and uh, it consists mostly about ammonium bisulfide corrosion and ammonium bisulfide corrosion no, uh, occurs not only in the overhead section of uh, FCC unit or a uh, sour water stripper unit but it also occurs in hydro treatment uh, unit or hydro cracking so we will discuss about that in detail in our next, le next lecture